Thanks for joining us. I'm Nancy Furness, and this is Tri-Cities Community Television. And we're filming at the Fountainhead Network in Port Coquitlam today. Just before we get started, I want to express our gratitude for being able to um, hold these interviews on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Coquitlam First Nation. And we thank the Coquitlam people who continue to live on these lands and to protect the lands and the waters and all that lies above and below. So this afternoon, I'm really excited to be joined by two local co-authors. We have Pat Cooper and Hazel Postma, who are going to talk to us um, this afternoon about a book that they have just recently completed. So thank you both for joining me this afternoon. I'm really looking forward to hearing about the book. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. I was, maybe we could start by just um, tell us a little bit about your backgrounds and what brought you together um, and inspired you to write this book as co-authors. We're both retired journalists. I was the editor at the Co Coquitlam now for 25 years. Before that I worked at the Columbian in New Westminster and the Ottawa Citizen. And my claim to fame is I hired Hazel. Oh. She, <laughs> Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, she was a re she was started as a stringer and then became a reporter and went on to be an editor at one of our other papers for two years. Uh, so we have known each other for thirty five years, something like something that. incredible like that. You go back a little ways. Yeah, we do, and we worked well. We always worked really well together, as well as being good friends as well. And during the pandemic we were kind of feeling at odds, or just out of sorts. We didn't have anything to do, really. And so we started fooling around with different ideas. That's right. And we, we have, in the past, when we worked together, uh, collaborated on stories. So we knew that we could, uh, that our styles were fairly similar. Yeah, so we batted around uh, stories. I think Pat one thought first, well, let's write a romance novel. And I take in a course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but then we no, I like mysteries, so let's try a mystery. And then we sort of reality set in and we realized you, you write about what you know. So that was how we ended up uh, coming up with a fictional newsroom and peopling it with characters. Uh, and I have to say, almost everything in the book um, is based on an experience we've had or that we heard about from another colleague. We little poetic license, of course, and uh, we changed the name so we didn't want to get sued. <laughs> That's always a good <laughs> idea. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, those are the richest experiences sometimes, the ones that you either know firsthand mm -hmm. or have heard about very closely. I, I think um, I was mentioning to you earlier, when I read through the book, it was like I knew these people, right? It's like people, they were so real and, and things that you've seen people do and you know people that have acted like that or, or done those sorts of things. You've um, been co-authors and I'm just, and you're still speaking to each other. <laughs> still, so, That's true. Um, I was wondering, yeah. can you explain a little bit because when you read the book, and we'll talk a lot more about the book in a, a bit, but when you read the book, it's like there's one person who's written it. It's, this, it's the style and, and sort of the stories and things. How did you work together to create something like that? Well, we. it would be nice if I said we had this incredible plan and outline, but that would not be true because we just kind of winged it. We really did. We sat down and when we decided this is what we were going to do, we started telling each other, well, do you remember this? Do you remember that? And and she had different experiences because she was working in different, different places, places than I was, but all of them were sort of they fit together and so then we we sat down I we came up with a we came up with a list we called them sort of vignettes and we had like 29 39 we had about oh, 40 wow. different vignettes so there may be a volume two Oh, oh gosh no <laughs> uh, and so we came up with these vignettes and then we we sort of whittled them down a bit and then we thought okay you know who really wants to write this one or that one and we shared them out and then we each edited each other's because oh. we've both been editors as well right. so we edited each other and 
to your point that it's hard to tell who who uh, wrote what we actually can't remember oh, in many true. cases which one did you write that one it's really good it must have been you <laughs> That's so. funny because, it, yeah, and they're all, all the stories in the book are so engaging. So did you go through a process where you said, okay, these are my top 10, those are my top 10, and like you had to pick which ones? We did, we did have to do a little bit of um, judicious editing because we had probably more than we needed. Um, but it worked really well. And at some point we decided we had now had sort of some stuff to put in the book. We didn't have a plot and we certainly didn't have any characters. So, and keep in mind this was during COVID. So we were doing all this by internet or over the phone. Even more challenging. <laughs> so wow. anyway, we came up with a kind of a list of characters and then we just went on from there and tried to, you know, it has a vague plot and that's kind of how we did it. It, it. it was just like, oh, that's a good idea. We'll do that. And then, yeah. and then we, when we saw, when we noticed um, a gap, so we were trying also to give people a, a feel for what, you know, it's like working in a community newspaper. So when we noticed that, you know, well, we've done all these sort of funny ones. We've done these slightly Please. political ones. But, but in reality, there's lots of very serious um, things. So we we had to then develop a couple of other vignettes and put them together in it because it isn't all fun and games. I mean, it was primarily a lot of fun, but it isn't. There are some very difficult times. And I, I notice you deal even with suicide yeah. and things like that. So yes. you're dealing with what mm -hmm. you would have dealt with mm -hmm. as newspaper yes. reporters, yeah. but in a very engaging way, in a very human way, like all the characters in there, it's like you, you know them, right? So. Um, can you tell, maybe share a couple of your favorite um, stories, like just like tell us a little bit about um, particular stories that were, um, I don't know, some of your favorites that you put in there? Well, the one that people always find interesting is that <clears throat> when, after the Colombian went out of business, a group of, uh, a, a group of us started what became the Now Chain. And we were very low budget. And so we decided we wanted a horoscope, but we couldn't afford to get one. So we wrote one. It was called oh, the, okay. the No Nonsense Horoscope. <laughs> and basically, we went to the grocery store and bought one of those little booklets that you buy for a dollar at the checkout, because I didn't even know what the 12 signs were. <laughs> and, the, and then we would look through this. And from there, we would extrapolate what we thought maybe the horoscope signs you were. You made up your own horoscope. Oh yeah, yeah, we made up the horoscope. And we, you know, it would, we put in all kinds of things like floss your teeth, you know, or be kind to other people today. You know, just whatever kind of, we tried to keep it sort of what the little booklet was saying, you know, and we never had bad news. Oh, okay. It was always good news or well, me. you were in charge. Right? Oh yeah, it was great. Anyway, we saved a lot of money because we couldn't afford a horoscope in the beginning. <laughs> <Or a horoscope. laughs> well, that's, I know uh, just some of the ones, um, just looking through there, I, I read uh, the chapter on elections and it was like, it was just really engaging and funny because we've just recently had a municipal mm -hmm. election. So um, just trying to imagine all the things that go on behind the scenes when people are scrambling for deadlines and things are changing as you go along. And I just, um, I thought that was really well done as well. But... We, we had uh, one of my favorites was, um, and it, based on truth, in the summer, there's often not, not a lot of news, and, but you still have to fill the paper. So, uh, you know, and you can't, you can't make it up. But one of Pat's ideas when she was editor was that we would, each of the reporters would take up a sport they'd never done before. Oh, okay. and, and I think it was the summer up that Coquitlam hosted the summer games. Um, oh yeah, so, that, that could have been. Yeah, so we were trying, they were supposed to do something that was a summer game yeah. sport. So I did, I, mine, I took up, well took up, I went paintballing and... Uh, Is that an and, sport? <laughs> no, but I, I went paintballing and discovered I was actually an incredible sniper. Well, if you know me, oh, I'm yeah. a bit of a pacifist, but it turns That's out why I know you, but. If, it turns out that if you hide in the paintball, 
you can just sit really, really quietly and pick off people as they come by. <laughs> you never actually need to emerge <laughs> from your hiding place. <laughs> and then the other one I did was fly fishing on the Coquitlam River. So really fun, you know, and you make a fun story from it. And so Pat had the story she needed and we all got to do, you know, odd pastimes. Not the fly fishing's odd or paintballing, but you know, they were new to me. They were new to the reporters. Uh, that yeah. was the point. You couldn't do something you'd already done. done. No, I love it. And it sounds like not only did you come up with some really great stories, but there was also a camaraderie um, in the newsroom. There's all those dynamics going on with, you know, who's have all these different relationships and, and things like that. So is that true in a newsroom? You have all these dynamics happening all the time? I, th I think so. I think you what? become close with the people you're working with. I, I always thought that I had a wonderful job because I could hire people I wanted to be my friends, <laughs> you know, and I did. And, and I've been retired for quite a while now, and I still have friends from, that I knew from newsrooms. Yeah. It's almost a family. Mm -hmm. kind of I think it depends on the size of the newsroom because we both worked in much larger newsrooms, mm -hmm. and then, it, you know, it's a different dynamic and then there's a bit more competition and people are are you know wanting that they want to get the front page and not the the other person mm -hmm. yeah so um but at the community level it was very collegial mm -hmm. yeah. well and you bring up sort of a little bit different of a point in <clears throat> that we used to have a lot of community newspapers mm -hmm. Every community had their own little, maybe one or even two mm -hmm. sometimes. And now we've recently seen yeah. a lot of um, decline in community newspapers. Can you maybe talk a little bit to that? Um, why are we seeing them decline? And also, what are we losing? What are we missing when we, we lose these community newspapers? We, well, I mean, part of the book was actually an homage to the community newspaper because I think both of us um, feel quite strongly that you lose a lot when you lose the community newspaper. You lose, you lose the eyes that are looking at all the things in the community. They're looking not just at the kids playing sports and the future artists and athletes and all that. They're looking at the budgets and where the city's spending the money. They're looking at the school board, like what programs are not are, you know, we're not having, or what are we having? They're looking at you know our roads and sewers, and they're just a watchdog um, for what's happening. You can't get that information anywhere else because it takes too much effort. You, right. To find out what's happening at City Hall, you have to go down there, you have to sit through the council meetings, you've got to look at it online, and you've got to know what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. right. Whereas the community newspapers, um, they, they've already got an idea of what are the important things. They listen to people, I mean the letters pages, was a really important part of no, the, sorry, letters let, to the letters to the editor and the op-eds, weren't they? They're yes. a very important part of we the don't newspaper. We do op-eds anymore. No. no, because the newspapers are so short-staffed, most of them don't have time yeah. to do any of that. To do a sort of an in-depth analysis. Yeah, it's or so to, nice when we see a little bit yeah. of that. And, and the editorials, which also, um, I know uh, they often it's canned copy now, what we would say, they buy it from somewhere else. Whereas mm -hmm. the true, the old-fashioned community newspapers, the editorial really was an almost the most important part of the newspaper and that was always written by the editor mm -hmm. and reflected um, you know what was going on in the community so it's I think a huge loss uh, in the Tri-Cities we're lucky we've got Tri-Cities TV but we also have um, the news and we have an online so yes. we're we're mm -hmm. a bit lucky that way but many communities have lost you know any hope of knowing what's going on locally that's true, and I think um, you're right. I know sometimes when I look up something, I'll look it up for three or four different sources, and it all goes back to the same original mm -hmm. article or original source. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing very few sources, yeah. you know, fanning out the same message across a number of different yeah. uh, 
newspapers, which... And we, we used to have competing newspapers in, yes. in almost every community. They were, the they were yeah. yeah, and that was wonderful. We kept each other on our toes. You did not dare miss a council meeting or a school board meeting or a major story because it was going to be on the front page of your competitor. So you better be on top of that. But that's a really good point, too, because, um, you know, like at first thought, I would think, oh, maybe it's redundant. You know, you have two newspapers, you're doing the same thing, but you're not. You're really holding each mm -hmm. other accountable, right? And you're trying to find different stories. So mm -hmm. find digging deeper and looking yes. in different places. And you do end up doing some of the same stories because that's the main story of that time that right. for that issue but the features are different you know you're when you're looking at you know local people that are doing interesting things you're going to find lo different local people doing interesting things because yeah, everybody on your staff knows a separate group of people that's true yeah. and yeah i think that i think the communities have really lost a lot it really does make a difference because I mean, we were we we covered three councils and a school board, and we didn't miss a meeting in 25 years right. that I was there. And now, no, I don't think anyone can. You know, you just don't. Yeah. You There's don't have the staff. The people, it's just not the people. I remember yeah. going to Port Coquitlam City Council, and there was always a reporter mm -hmm. there taking notes. And probably two, because there were two newspapers, so there would have been two reporters. And the radio, local radio, and the radio too would often be you know, there as well. And, and we used to laugh that you could always tell when the cable was at the at a council meeting because the re, all of the councillors and they, they all showed up and were all spiffy and and didn't blather on the way they often did. They were much more concise. You know, you could you you just knew instantly when the TV cameras were there. So it's not a bad thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's but true. I, you know. I just, I, I hope you will write some more because it was, it's just such an enjoyable book to read. And it, especially because it's about community and it's about things that I think the stories that are in there are stories that could happen in our own community, right? And Well, some of them did. Some oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Winterton, where is Winterton? <laughs> oh, Winterton, we made up. <laughs> yeah, Winterton is an amalgam of the cities we've worked in. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was trying to figure out, it's not BC, that's gotta be BC. Uh, but we'll never know, right? It's a mystery. It is. But we'll never tell. You'll never tell. That's your author's privilege not yeah. to. Um, so one thing that I, I had to have a chuckle at is on the back of the book. <laughs> <laughs> do you know which one I'm going to say? What are they going to do with yeah. free time now? Author's horrified husbands. <laughs> so um, I would like to ask the same question. What are you going to do now? Do you have other projects? Are you well, going to work together on something? We've, we've only just sort of finished this the part. Way. We're getting this published and, you know, getting it out there and doing a little bit of publicity about it. And so we've been talking about what we're going to do next. We have rejected two or three ideas okay. and we haven't found the one yet. But we think we'd like to do something else yeah. together because it was it, fun. It was. It, yeah. so, it felt like you were having a lot of fun because I was I was laughing as I was reading through it kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but can you talk maybe just a little bit about how you published the book? Uh, well, she has to tell you all of this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was in Newfoundland, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we, between us, we don't actually have the... IT skills to do it yourself, although I'm, I'm quite sure it's possible. So um, we went online and there's these various services where you can post what you need done and then people will bid on the work. And we had a very, um, a, we never met him, but someone, we, he called himself Joseph and so we called him Joseph obviously, but that's the only part of his name we knew and he actually did the formatting and stuff. Um, because, yeah, I mean, we got the pictures and all of that, but he was able to do a front cover and a back cover and the spine and, um, and get it. Yeah. It's quite a complicated process. And then, um, well, for us, it was a complicated process. Uh, and then um, you put it on uh, Amazon and um, they print as needed, so you don't oh. get left with a you know a 300 books that aren't selling. Right. Um, someone orders it's printed and it's there in a few days. So it's 
it's quite a good system. So you don't have a minimum number, you have to print nope. 500? No, nope. no, oh. no. Nope. Okay, no. so this is a whole new, this yes. opens up this, a whole new vista. I know, we, we, we didn't really know how it worked. Um, but yes, it's, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't think I'd want to do it myself. Everybody has their different skills. We're writers. He mm. clearly was a designer. And um, yeah, but it was great. But each other's strengths, like, you know, your strengths mm -hmm. are obviously yeah. writing. It's, yeah, it, so we know, left it to story. him. But, yes. Um, so how... Can we get a copy of this? Do we go on Amazon and order? Amazon.ca, and then if you just type in serial killer and other tales, it pops right up. And you have to spell serial like breakfast cereal. Yes. <laughs> Not the way it should have been spelled. Do you want to talk a little bit about the title? Um, well, the title just came from, I think that was somewhere you worked, actually, that came up with serial killer. Um, and it was just seemed like a typos were a, a uh, continual issue always, always always because just because people are writers doesn't make them very good spellers right. or proofreaders and right. they or proofreaders mm -hmm. uh, plus when you proof you often read what you hope you read to the same thing you, you read over yeah it. yeah you read over it and um they they didn't you, you know in the early days there were no there's no spell check so serial killer was one of the ones that got in. So it spelled. actually got into. Yes, and there's some other sort of typical ones. I I remember a story what, about a candy striper, the young girls that used to work in hospitals and they wore stripe. Right. And it went in without the second P, so it went in as a candy stripper. Oh, and no, it went in, sorry, with the double, with the double P. P. <laughs> Suddenly yeah. that changes everything. It does. There's, and there's, uh, in the book, there's several others that. Uh, there were some that didn't make it in the book because they were um, <laughs> unfortunate. They got censored out. <laughs> uh, yeah. We had, I, uh, the one that I did is, I, that was when fir I think Spellcheck first came in and we weren't aware that you always had to look to make sure it Spellcheck the right yeah, word. Because Spellcheck can mess you yes. up. Oh, yes. we didn't know that in the beginning. Anyway, I had someone fall in Belcare and break their anvil. Oh, no. Not their ankle. <laughs> You just never know where spell. And then I got letters to the editor saying, and why was that person hiking in Belcare with a, an carrying anvil. an anvil? <laughs> you know, it was very funny. Yeah. Well, maybe we can see some more. I, I do hope you'll do volume two. I know you said no, but... Well, we might. Okay. You never know. You never know. say never. Um, thank you so much for coming in this afternoon and, and joining us and, and sharing about your book. And um, I'm sure lots of people will be wanting to get this. I know that I've read part of it, and I'm looking forward to finishing Oh, thank course. you. That's really nice thank to hear. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Wonderful writing. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Nancy. And thank you for joining us this afternoon on Tri-Cities Community TV. We've been talking to Pat Cooper and Hazel Postma, who have just completed their first book called Serial Killer and Other Tales from the Newsroom. And yeah. we're looking forward to seeing more. Thank you.